so we've seen that in this um, section we'll be interested uh, about would be interested in uh, efficiency and efficient allocations and we'll try to figure out whether in the model just you know the when you solve the model, the allocation that you obtain is indeed efficient. Um, and if it, you know, if it's not, try to figure out what is the efficient allocation so that we know if there is a role for government intervention and the shape of the policies that the government, uh, try to figure out the shape of the policies that the government should implement. Um, now, but most of the time you will see in, in this lecture, what we'll talk about is the efficient unemployment rate. And so uh, a natural question is, why is it that we've boiled down We've reduced the whole discussion of the efficient allocation to just simply the efficient unemployment rate. Uh, you know, is it wh why can we do that? And it, aren't we losing a bunch of information here? Uh, so why do we focus? Why do we focus on the efficient unemployment rate and not? And not more generally the entire efficient allocation. Well, um, so actually that's an interesting question. Uh, so of, you know, a first you know a first sub question is why don't we keep track um, of uh, the entire allocation? The entire efficient allocation, and so that's the first uh, interesting sub question. So this is because uh, in the model that we are studying, so let, let, let's focus. So there, there are two interesting things here, but let, let's focus on the on the one market model that we've studied. So either the basic model or its dynamic extension. Then it turns out that as we've seen. Um, once you take into account the production function, once you take into account the matching function, what we saw is that actually all the variables in the model, so that means you know, the actions of all the people in the model and all the goods and services uh, that they produce, so everything that's described by the model is actually an explicit function of uh, market tightness. Because that's something that we saw. And that's why when we solve the basic model or when we solve the dynamic model, the, the focus was trying to find the market tightness that solves the model. Because once we had that market tightness, we can back out everything. Okay, so that was a key insight. Uh, so in the one market models, uh, so if we think about the models, all the variables, and so, of course, these variables in the model that describe the action of all the people and uh, the result of these actions, you know, so what people do and what they and what they produce, uh, all variables are uh, explicit functions of market tightness. So if we denote the, labor, the market tightness by um, set theta, so all the functions are uh, can be expressed as explicit functions. All the variables can be expressed as explicit functions of the market tightness. Uh, once um, the uh, structure of the economy, or once if you want the environment. Is uh, taken into account. So the structure of the economy, you know what I mean, is the production function, and of course the matching function etc. Um, so we know that, um, so for instance, just to give you an example, if we if we remember in the dynamic model, what did we have? Uh, what we saw in the dynamic model, for instance, we saw that the unemployment rate 
u was directly a function of theta once we take into account the matching function and uh and 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 the bad and the balance flow assumption so you remember the unemployment rate was lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta you know job the uh, of course job finding rate was f of theta uh, and you know because we assume like cobb douglas we know it was something like mu theta one minus theta um, we you know the uh, the matching wedge so the wedge between number of um, the number of uh, producers and the number of recruiters that was also a directly a function of theta uh, which was like lambda rho divided by q of theta minus lambda rho and then you know once you have this you also know that output was directly a function of theta because the output in this type of model was the number of people the employment rate which is one minus u of theta and these guys were employed, they all have a productivity A, and then you multiply that by the size of the labor force to have total output. Then you know like consumption was a direct fun function of theta because it was just the output divided by the matching wedge. So you know, you can really, uh, you remember we, we showed that you can back out everything directly um, as a function of um, the market tightness. And so, so what that means is that really, uh, uh, so once you have the market tightness, uh, once the market tightness theta is known, you know, given the structure of the economy that we've assumed, you can back out, you can compute um, all other variables, you know, all other uh, variables that are part of the allocation. So what that means is that you can summarize, uh, you can summarize any allocation by um, theta. So once you know the market data, you can figure out everything else about the economy. So basically what that means is that to know whether your uh, by their, yes, so to know whether an economy is efficient, you just need to know whether the market tightness is the efficient market tightness. Uh, so you have efficiency if and only if theta is equal to theta star. So you just need to know whether uh, your market tightness is efficient. If, if the market tightness is not efficient, you know that you're in an inefficient world. Um, so basically, you know, the, the whole model reduces to just one dimension, one variable, um, the market tightness. Uh, and so and you have inefficiency, if and only if theta is not theta star. Um, so basically, give, uh, the key thing is that given the, given the structure uh, of the models that we've assumed, um, uh, you know, we can summarize any allocation by their, uh, so it's enough to keep track of the market tightness uh, to know whether uh, whether uh, the, you know you are at efficiency or not and how far from efficiency you are. So what we learned from this. So the question that we what we ask here is why don't we keep track of the entire allocation? And we started with uh, one market model. In one market model, you don't need to keep track of the entire allocation because you can summarize any allocation by their tightness. Now, something that's uh, important to know here is that in general, uh, that's not of course true in, in this matching model. Uh, in general, in a, mark, in a model um, with N matching markets, What you need to do is, of course, you don't need to keep track of the entire allocation. In that case, you need to keep track and you keep track of the n market tightnesses.
And in fact, uh, we saw an example of that when we uh, extended our basic model to make it into a two market model. We saw that at the end, uh, once we take into account the structure of the economy, what, the only thing that we have to do uh, to solve the model was figure out the product market tightness and the labor market tightness. We saw that uh, in our two market model, all variables um, can be computed from um, product plus labor market um, tightnesses which we had denoted X and theta. Um, but in general, if we had added other, market, other markets with, matching, uh, with a matching function, you would need to add as many market tightnesses as there are markets. Um, but so here we'll mostly focus on a one market world, uh, just for simplicity, uh, like we'll like, take the most aggregate view. And so therefore, we only need to keep track of one market tightness. Okay, so that's one thing, but then, the next question, so that's why basically we need to focus only on one dimension. The second question is how can we move? So I guess the second question is then why not uh, focus on efficient, instead of the efficient unemployment rate, why not focus on the efficient uh, market tightness? Wouldn't that be more natural? Uh, so this seems that it's more, uh, it seems that it would be a much more natural thing to do. Since in the model, everything depends on market tightness. So the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, if we started from scratch, the study of stabilization policies and macro, absolutely. The focus should be on market tightness. Um, that's what we, that's what we should do. Um, so problem is that we are not starting from scratch and uh, most macro people are unfamiliar with the concept of market tightness. What they are familiar with though, well, what they are most familiar with is concept of say output gap. Um, but with a little stretch of the imagination, they're able to think also about concept of unemployment gap. And usually they think that well, output gap and unemployment gap are, are kind of the same. Um, and so they're also familiar with the concept of, I guess, efficient output level. Um, and therefore they're also able to think about you know, efficient unemployment rate. Uh, so these are things that people are familiar with. People are not familiar with an efficient market tightness. And so um, one of the reasons that I'll frame this discussion in terms of efficient unemployment rate is because that's what people are most familiar with. When we compute optimal policies, we'll frame them in terms of an uh, unemployment gap, so distance of the unemployment rate from the efficient unemployment rate. Of course, we could have framed them in terms of a tightness gap, which would have been more natural, and in, in certain cases, actually much simpler. Um, but because you know, people are not uh, familiar with this concept, and um, policymakers are not used to thinking that way, and discussions are not framed that way, I'll show you what you can, how you can reframe everything in terms of an unemployment gap, an efficient unemployment rate. But it's true that the more natural way to frame it would be in terms of uh, market tightness and a uh, tightness gap. So the, the key thing is that it's more natural. Uh, and in fact, we can do it. Uh, but uh, people are less um, familiar with it. So even for your own work, if you want to use this type, uh, this concept and this result for your own work, and if you want people to understand what you're doing, or if you want to describe what you're doing to um, policy people, it makes sense, you know, to do the translation in unemployment gap and efficient unemployment rate, because that's what people are used to. Um, but often a lot of the analysis actually centered around the efficient tightness and the tightness gap. Uh, but hopefully, you know, as people um, discover, well, People realize that matching models are actually very useful to think about business cycle and stabilization policies. Hopefully people would move towards focusing on uh, market tightness. Um, so people are more familiar with you know, unemployment gap than uh, 
and efficient on improvement than tightness gap. Okay. Um, right, and I guess the last question, so let's see. So we have this, we have the allocation, so that was a two-part thing. Um, so uh, before we move on, like uh, another thing that I wanted to briefly touch on is um, how, you know, how does this lecture and what we're going to do relate to other concepts of unemployment that people talk about? So what about, for instance, the Nehru non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment? What about uh, what the CBO calls the natural rate of unemployment? So CBO is a Congressional Budget Office. What about the CBO's natural rate? Why are we going to talk about these things and how is what we're going to do related? No, there is essentially no relationship with these concepts because these concepts have nothing to do with efficiency. Um, and, you know, in fact, so these concepts are empirical concepts. People have ways of measuring these things, but... Uh, You know, these concepts have, well, like the Nehru has a theoretical foundations, um, but the natural rate of unemployment that the CBO compute has no theoretical uh, foundations. Uh, but in any case, these things have nothing to do with efficiency and they have nothing to do with measuring how well the economy is, uh, is doing, how, you know, whether the amount of slack in the economy is appropriate or not. As these things have nothing to say about this. So of course the Nehru, um, the Nehru, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an unemployment rate, but it has really nothing to do with unemployment. It has everything to do with inflation. Uh, so it's the unemployment rate to keep inflation stable. Unemployment rate to keep inflation stable, and you know that's based on the idea that there is an underlying Phillips curve, and that if your unemployment rate is not, if your unemployment rate is above the uh, Nehru, then inflation would just uh, you know, decrease over time, and if your unemployment rate is uh, below the is above the Nehru, your is below the Nehru, your inflation would just accelerate over time. Um, so people care about, you know, the people who care about the Nehru, they don't care about unemployment, they care about inflation. And of course, then you wonder why don't they just look at inflation? Sure, you know, people say like, oh, the Nehru is, people estimated the Nehru to be too high, or people estimated the Nehru to be too low. Um, people can just look at inflation, you know. Uh, in a sense, like I'm not sure what people, why, you know, you can see if your inflation is stable at whatever, 1.5%, well, it means that, uh, it means that if your inflation is stable, it means that you're at, you know, you're, you're at the narrow, basically. If your inflation um, ac ac accelerates uh, or decelerates, then it means that you're not at the narrow, you're above it or you're, uh, you're below it. But, you know, you don't really, you know, you can just look directly at what the, what the behavior of inflation does. And people who, are, who care about the Nehru, they, they don't care about unemployment, they care about inflation. And they think that the underlying structure, the underlying structure of the economy is based on a Phillips curve. And therefore, you know, we need to, you know, somehow they think that we need to put unemployment at some level so that inflation doesn't uh, accelerate. But, you know, they can just look at inflation and, you know, play with, say, monetary policy to bring inflation to the uh, level they want. Because we know that in general, monetary policy tightening uh, reduces inflation and uh, monetary, when you lose a monetary uh, policy, um, you're going to uh, increase inflation. So you can just use that to bring inflation to um, whatever level you want. Another concept that people talk about, so it's the natural rate of unemployment. Um, so this is more of a, so that's what's computed by the CBO. 
Congressional Budget Office. That's a fuzzy theoretical concept. You know, there is no real theoretical underpinning. But the idea of the natural rate of unemployment as a CBO computed is that uh, it's some kind of trend unemployment. Um, so you know, it's uh, it's take, it's smoothing out the unemployment rate um, to get the trend of it and know uh, roughly uh, what is the trend. And so why would we care about this trend? So if you think that your economy is efficient on average and um, it kind of oscillates around an efficient trend, then it's useful to have the natural rate of unemployment uh, or the trend unemployment rate because that trend would be what's efficient. And then, you know, if you target that, then you're at efficiency. But of course, you know, if... Um, that's really dependent on the view of the world that you have on the underlying structure of the economy. But if you think that uh, a matching model or a matching market describes the economy well, then we know that it will show that these models are not, they, they are generally inefficient and there is no reason that um, the trend on unemployment rate would be efficient. And in a case like this, if trend is not efficient, I think the trend of the unemployment rate, I mean, you know, it's a statistical measure of something, but it's uh, it's not a measure of efficiency, and in particular, it shouldn't be a, uh, it shouldn't be a policy target at all. Uh, so that wouldn't be um, very, you know, it wouldn't be helpful to design policy. So anyway, here we, in this lecture, we're going to think about what is the unemployment that maximizes welfare in the in the matching models that we've been studying.